Hello, and welcome to another edition of Hey, What's That Record? I'm your host, Diane Freminen. Cemetery like magic, in a circle like magic. Three o'clock, it's like magic. In the morning, like magic. If you were to hear a disembodied voice singing these words, you may ask yourself, my, what type of a bad situation am I in? But the better question to ask would be, hey, what is that record? And the answer would be Wizards and Cowboys, the second offering from Sacred Spirits, and his first in 11 years. I'm joined today by the wizardly cowboy himself, Mr. Josh Kufelt. Josh, hello, and tell me about your first record, Some Stay. Well, the first record, uh, we did a, some work in New York. Uh, I went there alone and did some work with a guy named Nick Stump from the band French Kicks. Um, I, and then I came back to Cincinnati, didn't feel like it was finished yet, so uh, had my friend Chad help me and the band uh, finish it out. We did some work at his uh, grandpa's office building and uh, yeah, he, he kind of took it from a 50% finished product to what we ended up uh, releasing. He put a lot of work into it. I see. And that was 2012. It's 2023 now. Why the gap between records? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Uh, I was kind of, I was, there's several years after we released it where I was playing with that band and we we wrote some new material but we never really ended up recording it and we kind of just went our separate ways eventually and i moved to north carolina for a year and uh then when i came back is when covid hit and uh i bought the uh all my equipment for recording basically off of the covid stimulus check so that's when i started working on it again uh so yeah, I don't know. A lot of wasted time in between, that's for sure. Mm. Well, to borrow a phrase from Eagles, it wasn't really wasted time, we hope. What type of recording equipment did you buy? Uh, well, I got a refurbished uh, Mac desktop. Um, let's see. I bought a, a guitar amp. Um, I bought a lot of stuff. I don't... I can't really remember every, but the main thing was the computer because uh, that's kind of that's what I use. I use GarageBand to record everything. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Remarkable what you can accomplish with such a limited tool set. Yeah. Wizards and Cowboys has a decidedly spooky feel to it. Uh, is that intentional? Well, I I think it initially was intentional because actually it started out as a totally different album at one point where I. I wanted to do a record that was kind of like a concept record about uh, true crime. Mm. So I had all these songs about like b dying from getting shot and stuff like that. And uh, but then uh, I don't know what I just kind of felt like I wanted to do something that was less negative feeling. And uh, I don't know if I actually accomplished that because. <laughs> uh, uh, it did turn out pretty dark. I was very conscious of how dark it was, actually, by the time I finished it. Uh, and can't say that I'm overly happy with that, actually. But it's just, it is what it is. I figured I uh, may as well put out what I've been working on. Mm. Well, I am glad you decided to share it. It's a wonderful record. Thank you. Uh, tell me about your process for writing and recording songs. Do you complete a song before recording, or sort of capture it as you go? 99% uh, of the time, it's, it's, it happens as I'm recording. Uh, I'll, usually, we'll start out with uh, a drum beat or something and build off of that. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I really haven't written any songs on guitar in a while except for maybe one or two. Uh, everything else is kind of just, I try to stack textures on top of each other until I think I have something cool and then maybe I'll like, I'll s take that and just use it as a sample and then build off of that or something, you know. Kind of, I don't really have any set way of how I do it. 
I see. Then I would imagine the music comes typically before the lyrics. Oh, definitely, yeah. The lyrics, uh, it feels like writing like a children's book where it's like you have like only like a certain amount of words that you're able to use. And it takes me so long to write lyrics. Like it, a song that has like two or three lines of lyrics I could be like tr trying to formulate the lyrics for that song for months, and like, and even what I eventually come up with, I'm, I'm still like, well, maybe I should change this word, you know. But uh, yeah, so lyrics are very hard for me, actually. Mm. Well, the care with which you write is apparent. Your lyrics do strike me as, I think, short fiction or poetry. You see. Yeah. Well, I actually, uh, what made me think of that is. Uh, there's a John Irving book called A Widow for One Year about a, about a child's book author. And he talks about how like, he, he would write like thousands of versions of his, the children's book before because every word had to be perfect. But also uh, another lyricist that uh, was actually inspirational to me was Riff Raff, the rapper Riff Raff. Uh, he, because I picked up on that in his records, he seems to like have like a like a vocabulary list where like he literally uses the same words over and over again in every song. And I kind of wanted to do something like that, where like if I said rabbit in one song, I say rabbit in another song, you know, or etc. You know. Right, like keeping with a thematic sort of. Yeah, trying to use the same words. Uh, I I just think that's something that's kind of cool. As do I. Now, do you sort of ingest other arts as you work on the record? That is, do you allow yourself to be influenced by outside creative forces? I have heard you are a lover of the cinema. Uh, definitely movies. Uh, I was on a big Hitchcock binge, actually, when I recorded Wizards and Cowboys. And uh, Hitchcock, and then uh, I have this, I have a membership to a streaming site called Arrow Player that has, like, all these, like, B movies and Japanese movies, and I watch watch a lot of those. Uh, the director Takashi Miike is very uh, he's like kind of like the Japanese David Lynch kind of, and I, I was watching a lot of his stuff too. Yeah, yeah, movies are definitely very influential. Uh, they movies are what I would like to do if I could do anything, but, you know. I would imagine that film is a considerably more prohibitive medium. Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot more people involved. You can make music with one person, you need like a hundred people to make an indie movie. Tell me about the physical space in which you made Wizards and Cowboys. Uh, well, I... Half of this record, I was actually in my parents' basement. Uh, well, I started it there, kind of. And then I moved to an apartment near the Cincinnati Zoo. And um, yeah, my, I record in the living room of my apartment and I have like pictures of people that, like mysterious figures, I think is, I like kind of collect eight by 10 portraits of like historical and mysterious figures. And so like, I have like, like, my computer's here, and then I have like Edgar Allan Poe looking at me here, and I have like uh, Lee Harvey Oswald here, and David Lynch, and Charles Dickens, and like Michael Jackson and Prince, of course. Uh, I don't know, I think, it, and Houdini. I have three pictures of Houdini. Uh, for some reason, I got it in my head that like, if I like have like a picture of these people like that they're somehow like helping me make the music or something i don't know but uh, i like the thought of that very much now i did want to be sure to ask you about frequencies and tuning standards well uh that's something else that i got interested in when i was working on this record because i uh i was doing research on like uh, like like i was how they figured out like the tuning standard back in the, like they would use tuning forks to tune things and i in researching that because i was just curious like how how to, like how would an orchestra play together like in the 1500s or something you know and uh but then i in researching that i found out that in the late 1800s the universal uh tuning standard was actually changed from it used to be 
I'm, I'm not going to get the numbers correct here, but I think it used to be 440 hertz was the, the, the middle A frequency, and now it's like 432. Or no, it's the other way around. It used to be 432, and now it's 440. And so that translates to like about like a quarter of a step. And so I tried to tune a lot of my songs down to the old uh, tuning frequency standard. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, but uh, like the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix and like Pink Floyd, like they all use the tuning that I was trying to replicate, but I don't know if I actually got it right or not. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So what is next for Sacred Spirits? Are you working on anything at the moment? Uh, yeah, I've, I just started working on something new. Uh, I'm, like your earlier question, you were asking me about the, uh, the darkness of the music, or like how it turned out kind of dark. And so I, I want to consciously make something that has a, like, I want to make an album that's like a dance party album is my next record. Oh, lovely. I felt certain moments on Wizards and Cowboys had a sort of discotheque or a dance club kind of feeling. Um, I kind of went down like a rabbit hole with uh, Russian and Ukrainian club music when oh. the war started. Mm. Uh, I kind of, that's definitely what I want to try to do more of now. Uh, I tried to put a little bit of that on Cowboys and Wizards or Wizards and Cowboys, I mean. But yeah, this next one I want to be more, uh, not necessarily like more palatable, but like more uplifting. <laughs> Very good. Well, I look forward to it. Josh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Be sure to buy and listen to Wizards and Cowboys by Sacred Spirits. I'm Diane Friminen, perpetually asking, hey, what's that record? Bye. <laughs>